How you folks doing? I get this question often. In fact, I've been defending this point for almost 15 years now. And that is, can in-office CAD CAM produce the same quality as a good lab? I recently saw a comment on a forum that was comparing CEREC restorations versus lab restorations. And the question was, why am I not getting lab quality with my CEREC restorations? So let's talk about that because I've coined this phrase for years. CEREC can be whatever you want it to be. So can we get lab quality restorations? Let's get into it. I tell you, there's nothing that gets me more excited about creating beautiful CAD CAM restorations, particularly morphology. So I'm gonna deal with the posterior element in my clinical theater right now. I love good morphology, just not for the way it looks, but I want good morphology for the way it functions. I would say one of the best ways to achieve that today is definitely with the PrimeScan latest software. With biogenetic variation in just a few seconds, you can get the anatomy morphology that you want, but it's dependent on a few things. You gotta have enough reduction to create the morphology for the material you're gonna use. And that is the minimal thickness of that material. Because if you reduce in your prep for just minimal thickness, you're gonna have flat looking crowns. That's right. I always use two to two and a half, the minimal thickness in my closer reduction. Now I've been doing that for years, even with gold, I would reduce at least two millimeters for gold. So the gold wouldn't wear through. And guess what happened after 30 years? Some of the gold start wearing through. So I had to upgrade those crowns. So we need to look at the minimal thickness and we need to prepare. So the biogenetic variation proposal, which I prefer posteriorly, can optimize that morphological presentation on your screen. That's how you start with it. So it's all about the prep and reduction. And again, I'm not sending too many teeth off to have root canals done. In fact, probably less now than ever in my whole career. And that's over 30 years. So in order to get that good sizzling functional anatomy that just psychs me out in a good way, I have to have enough clearance for the material I'm going to use. So preparing is how you make it happen. That's the first step. Number two is when you design, if you're having to use a lot of tools, you probably don't have enough reduction for the material you're going to use. It's as simple as that. The check and balance is already in the software. That's the beauty of this system. And the biogenetic proposing is there because you have options such as in the variation tool. That's right, the biogenetic variation tool, you can get any anatomy you want. So once you have that design, you shouldn't have to be tweaking a lot. We need to look at the mouth that we're providing care into. What is the angle of the cusps and the triangular ridges? Number one is, do they already have a lot of wear and tear? If they have a lot of wear and tear and they have flat teeth, you put in something with 25 degrees or more of angles on those triangular ridges, you're gonna have collision in your occlusion or the probability of that. So you have to look at the mouth. What's beautiful about the intelligence of the software we're using today with the latest version is that it will provide an anatomy proposal that's pretty much gonna fit the functionality of that mouth. All you have to do is tweak and refine the occlusion. And that's the beauty of where we are right now. But to get that nice aesthetic finish, it's what we do once it comes out of the milling unit. There's another factor we have to consider in getting good morphological appeal from our milled restoration, and that is how you're milling it out. What size of burrs are you using? There is a difference, particularly if you do extra fine mill, you've got smaller burrs to do that final milling pass to get better anatomy, particularly on that occlusal surface. Now, if you're using zirconia, you really have a much cleaner system because you have the needle burr. With the prime mill, if you're using the extra fine zirconia mill, you're gonna get really good reproduction of the anatomy that you see on that screen. <laughs> Even with that beautiful mill that we have now, I'm still gonna do a few things once that restoration comes out of that milling unit to really sizzle that morphology. And that's the secret here. That's the secret is to build your skill set. When I think about building skill set, it takes me clear back to dental school when we used to memorize the way every tooth looked, right? And we had those quizzes of where we'd have to identify between the right and left lower incisors. That was 
paying attention to a lot of detail. Well, we still need to have that in our brain when we're looking at morphology. And there's a lot of books that we can study today and and become good at knowing what you want to get. Because if you know what you want, it's easy to get it, particularly morphologically, whether it be anterior teeth or posterior teeth. So you want to know where you want to go, particularly with what you do once your restoration comes out of the milling unit. I want to use the proper support with the lab kits. I have several lab kits that I've worked with Meisinger on for both zirconia and ceramics. And I actually love the craft of refining the occlusal morphology, the finish, the surface texture, to really make these restorations sizzle. And I'll tell you, you know who I've learned most of this from? That's right, lab technicians I really admire. So chair side, if we follow the steps and we know where we want to go, you can get morphology that equals anything in dentistry today. So it becomes more of a craft. And the question I would ask is, do you have a passion for that? You can delegate this to team members. I've trained team members that are phenomenally gifted at creating great morphology when they have the skill sets and the tools to get it done. You can easily get that done. So here's the question. Can I get lab quality? Absolutely. And I'll tell you that all started with dental school when we used to carve amalgams or we would place a composite in the mouth. It's how you develop it, it's how you finish it. But with CAD CAM, with the current version of a software in milling units, we can do it in a really short period of time. And it's a lot easier than carving in an amalgam or doing a traditional wax up. We've all done that. We had to do that to get through dental school. So digitally, piece of cake. I can easily do that today. It's about getting the skill sets down to go through the process. You can tell I'm getting a little heated here in a good way because I see that all the time. And I'll get that from doctors when I'm out there lecturing and they're saying, well, you know, Sarek doesn't look good. Well, it's how you manage the system that makes a difference. And so when you go into this system, you have to master the craft. It's so easy to do. Get to training, get it done, understand materials, and you'll have a better life. I know I have, and I'll tell you, I've had a much better career because of CAD CAM. And I've had CAD CAM in my office for 15 years right now, and I've been doing this a long time. That's in the dental theater, that is. And I hope to do it a lot longer because you know why? I enjoy the journey. I enjoy the craft of dentistry. And when I create something that's a masterpiece and I give it to that patient, I'm giving them my best. And that's much more than dentistry. That is a fulfillment that I have in my heart and my professional self-esteem that has changed me forever. So yes, we can get high-end lab quality with this technology. You just have to go about it right. So if you have any questions or comments, post them below. Keep looking upward in your career. Never be a victim of the circumstances. And I'll tell you now, with Prime Scan in my clinical theater in the current milling units, and prior to that, going clear back to Red Camp, it's been the best decision I've ever made in my career to get that in my clinical theater. Because I have control of a lot of things. And that's what really counts to me. Talk to you later. Bye.